Today, I'll explain why I think China's real death is 400 million people from COVID in the three years. This is State of Politics. I'm David Zhang. Before we get started on today's video, make sure to like and comment below on today's topic and also subscribe to our channel on YouTube. If you're on Gunjing World, make sure to also follow our channel there. First of all, I'm not trying to push COVID vaccines or fear. I'm simply trying to reason why I think the CCP is severely covering up the real death since the very beginning. And this isn't a topic that uh, I'm very happy to report on. It's people dying. But I think it is very important that I do because these deaths are because of the Chinese Communist Party lying to us. Of course, you don't have to believe me. I mean, it's a shocking figure. But let's not be quick to deny the numbers because we can definitely watch to see what happens. Now, here's the important part, and you should probably care, because the lies and the deception of the, of the Chinese Communist Party not only murdered millions of Chinese people, its lies in 2020 caused the U.S. to lose more than a million Americans and much more around the world. So to prevent another disaster like this, we have to recognize the lies. And it's important to understand how much the CCP has actually downplayed the actual death in China. Now, would you believe me if I said from 2020 till now, 400 million people in China have died from COVID? Now, when I first heard this figure, I was shocked. Now, this comes from Master Li Hongzhi, the founder of Falun Dafa, a spiritual meditation. Now, if you don't know, Falun Dafa or Falun Gong is a meditation exercise that started in 1992 in China. And in 1999, the CCP started a mass persecution against the group. And in 2006, the crime of forced organ harvesting was discovered and revealed to the world, where the CCP is continuing to this day, murdering millions of Falun Gong and Uyghurs and other religious prisoners for their organ. Now, in his words, since 2020, the pandemic in China has killed 400 million people because the CCP continues to deceive and lie to cover up the real situation in China. And he says, by the end of this wave of the COVID outbreak, a total of 500 million people will die in China. He also says the last time, SARS, in 2003, when it occurred, uh, 200 million people died in China. Now, the Chinese Communist Party years later found out that the population was decreasing and immediately moved on from the long-term one-child policy to two or three children. Now, 400 million may seem like a really big number, more than the entire population of the United States by more than 70 plus million people. And it sounds impossible, right? Given the fact that that's 30% of China's population. Last year, a massive data leak in the Shanghai police base showed 1 billion user data only. Chinese police system has access to 1.4 billion user data as needed. For them to only have 1 billion suggests something is fishy. There's no way they lost that data. Where did the 400 million go? Of course, there is no way that we can actually prove this using data since China never releases any real data. What we have are circumstantial evidence to suggest that this could be the case. A history search shows it is possible. What I'm trying to say is that the truth about the Chinese regime covering up how many people have died in these past three years will one day be revealed, one way or another, and I think it's worth our attention for us to realize that the Chinese regime cares exactly zero amount about how many people die. Mao Zedong famously said in the 1950s in a Communist Party meeting that China is willing to sacrifice 300 million Chinese people in a global nuclear warfare. And in 1958 to 1961, the three-year famine created by the Great Leap Forward killed 30 million people. Now, according to an assistant of the Chinese Central Military Vice Chair, or former Vice Chair, uh, he had internal data at 70 million deaths due to starvation and otherwise. And the number of people that died in the 10 years of the Cultural Revolution to this day is still a mystery. Exactly how many died when Deng Xiaoping took over, he told Italian reporter Oriana Falacci, quote, an exact figure is impossible. It will never be possible because they died for various reasons and because China is such a vast country. And the countless babies killed in the planned birth of the one child policy, too. So that means even if 400 million people died in China, a country of that sheer size and population, it likely is not going to be as dramatic as people would think because of population distribution among the, uh, the different areas of the country. Now let's talk some numbers. If you consider what 400 million deaths really look like over the span of three years, the average spreads down to more than 300,000 deaths per day over the three years. 
And China has more than 2,000 counties, so each county boils down to about 150 deaths, which doesn't seem like much if that 150 is further spread to the dozens of towns and hundreds of villages. Another piece to add is that rural China has much less access to medical service, and their deaths are usually undercounted, and when people are buried, usually underground. And in China, a country of 1.41 billion people by official numbers, 400 million is not visible when we spread that out throughout the entire country. Because unfortunately, as everything with everywhere else, the largest cities like Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen will still seem populous. Compare that to the U.S., which has 331 million people, most of its population are also in major cities like San Francisco, New York, L.A., Chicago, and Houston. Even if in the U.S., if you lived in a major city, you would see that people are everywhere, like you would in a Chinese city. So the idea that people will see any signs of visible population decline in these cities from their perspective is unrealistic. But of course, we're not discrediting people who have lost a loved one or people who haven't lost a loved one. Still, having more than the entire U.S. population die from COVID seems like a long shot, isn't it? Well, based on a study by China's top university recently, Beijing University, they claim that using data finds 900 million infections in China right now. And that number comes from the search results on Chinese search engine for keywords like COVID, positive, fever, etc. Meaning that it only accounted for those that were actually using a phone to search for these key terms, not including older people who do not know how to use a phone or a search engine. And Chinese officials already said that 90% of China's population is infected. So if we just take the 900 million infections in China at a 1% death rate, which is lower than what many countries around the world have, that would still be 9 million people dying. But the actual percentage is much higher given the comparatively worse uh, medical system that China has, which already collapsed, as we've seen in this round of the infection. Then when you factor in countless videos of people getting cremated in China, lines that stretch miles, days to get an appointment, for example, in Shanghai, the original cremation time of eight hours per day was actually changed to 24 hours, seven days a week. And the original corpse processing time for about four days was then extended to more than 16 days. So according to the above data, it's estimated that the number of deaths in Shanghai is more than 12 times the normal period and the number of deaths per day is estimated to exceed at least 4,000, where the normal is usually two, uh, 350. So in just 30 days, Shanghai could see 120,000 deaths. Multiply that by 10 of China's most populous cities, top 10 of them, that would be 1.2 million deaths in just cities along in the 30 days period. So if we times that by another 12 given the year, that's 40 million deaths. According to Reuters, in Beijing's largest funeral parlor, several hearse cars could be seen entering every minute on December 18th. And the former Chinese media personality Zhao Lanjian recently tweeted that the number of deaths in the city of Beijing due to the pandemic is too high, up to 10,000 a day. And many bodies have no place to rest. The Chinese Communist authorities would use frozen meat freezers to store the bodies temporarily. And in late December 2020, video footage showed that uh, there was a tidal wave of corpse trucks out of Chongqing Jing'an Funeral Parlor, and the queue was more than two kilometers long. And there's also a video showing that a large number of people have gathered in Jingwan's Wangguo Crematory to send funerals. And as well as the Guangzhou Funeral Parlor also has a pile of bodies, and there is also a long queue for cremation. And in fact, many cities across the entire country they're seeing long queues in front of funeral homes and uh, cremation areas. What seems to have been revealed on the internet is that many places, they have cremators burning multiple bodies at the same time. In other words, multiple bodies in a single furnace. So simply using crematorium to estimate the number of deaths, it seems impossible to even get real data from that. And the incinerators are basically one of the many tools that the Chinese Communist Party would use to burn corpses. Now, if you don't remember, in Wuhan in 2020, when all of the crematoria in the entire city of Wuhan were burning day and night, the CCP actually sent 40 these so-called waste and animal carcasses disposal modules, or so-called mobile cremators, uh, with a temperature of 850 degrees to essentially assist Wuhan in burning bodies so that they can burn up to five tons of carcasses per day. And in other words, we don't actually know how many people died in Wuhan alone in 2020, 
And these numbers, again, the figures still are hidden to this day. But think about the data China once released in 2020. In the first two months of 2020, China's top three carriers combined lost 21 million users. And just based on that, do we wonder if those 21 million people come from double cell phone plans, which they canceled, one of them, or do they come from registered users canceling, or maybe they, people died from COVID? What the CCP claims is that after that initial period, we should see subsequent gain of the registered users. But instead, what we saw was not a gain, but a loss of another 5 million subscribers. And just yesterday, China actually released its 2021 census data in this year. And for the first time, the CCP admitted that their population growth is negative. China's population shrinks for the first time since 1960s in seismic shift. That's what Bloomberg calls it. Only a catastrophic event can actually make a country suddenly in one year experience a turn from a positive to a negative growth. And here's the catch. Just last year, they said China has 1.41 billion people. Now, that's official. However, Yi Fu Shen, who is a China population expert from the University of Wisconsin, he estimates that China's actual number of population in 2020 is only 1.28 billion, meaning that their official number in 2021 was 130 million people less. And even by that figure, 1.28 billion is now much lower given the latest wave of the outbreak in China. And a chat in China reveals a factory getting an order for 30 million body bags. How many people would have to die for them to get such a large quantity of order? And Dr. Yi says that China's Statistic Bureau just announced that China's population began to decline in 2020, not 2031 as officially projected by China and 2032 as projected by the UN in 2019 with 9.56 million births, actually 8 million, and then 10.41 million uh, deaths, which is, according to him, a gross underestimate. In fact, China's population census has always been faked. For example, in their 2020 population data, what puzzled people the most was the sudden increase of about 16.41 million people over the age of 65. Now, that's a huge increase of more than 60% over the year of 2019. And we know that only a certain number of people can actually turn the age of 65 in one year, right? So in 2020, that number is based on the birth year of 1955. And it turns out the birth rate in 1955 was not an increase, but a plunge from previous years, with only 20 million births. Essentially, what that means is that while in China, in 1955, only 20 million babies were born, in 2020, after calculating the number of deaths of people over the age of 65, they netted a gain of 16.41 million people in that age group. What's even more bizarre is, according to the official data on the net population growth, the number of deaths in 2020 is about 14.61 million, which is up from 9.45 million in 2019. So that's a full increase of nearly 5 million, right? And they also recorded that's a record since the reform and opening up era. So that means, in total, a 30 million people population of the in the age group of 65 or plus had to exist to make sense of those numbers. But then again, that year, again, only 20 million people were born in 1955. So where did all the rest of the number come from? And this is all on the basis that none of those 20 million died before the age of 65 from other illnesses. And the reason why I believe that this is because I personally lived in China through the SARS, uh, the first one in 2003. So I was very young back then, but I clearly remember even the moments that we saw on state TV. Mind you, this was Chinese propaganda TV, right? They've even declared then that there were so many deaths from uh, healthcare workers. Now imagine if this figure, the 400 million is unbelievable to you. I understand how shocking it would be to hear such a large number of people dying, especially that there's no model or analytical data that we can actually pull from. But this time in December, just before the new year, I called my relatives in China and they all got COVID. Thank God they recovered, but that's not the story for every family in China. So I say this because you might have lost a loved one from COVID, but you might also have not lost anyone from COVID. I personally not caught COVID in three, uh, three years, but it doesn't actually mean others have the same story as me. And here I am where I run into a huge problem trying to explain this because in my experience, I do not know anyone even in the United States where I currently live that has died from COVID, but you might know somebody who has died from COVID, somebody else who may be dear to you, or you might also not know anybody that died from COVID. 
What I'm trying to say is that we can't use our own experience to explain reality. And the problem we have as human beings is that we live through our personal experiences. John Doe next door probably feels different about a lot of things because of how they live through life uh, than me or you. And Jane Doe down the block also interprets a, a lot of things in the world unlike any of us. This is why even in China, like I was back during the SARS-1 period, I personally didn't actually know anyone that died from SARS. Yet I know that many people around the country lost a loved one. The comparable Spanish flu, which is estimated that about 500 million people or about a third of the world's population at the time became infected with this virus, and the number of deaths was estimated to be about 50 million worldwide. What the CCP is doing now is trying to sway from declaring a death as COVID-related. Their experts say that this is, quote, no point in trying to count. And they've done this since day one. Before 2021, China long reported that only 4,000 plus deaths was the official number uh, up until a certain point, basically this year. But the difference in mortality rates is actually shocking. The Chinese government reports a COVID death rate overall of 0.321 per 100,000 people population. On the other hand, the U.S. COVID death rate back then was about 248 per 100,000 population. So that's 800 times higher. And not only that, Dr. George Calhoun writes, through a model done by The Economist, China's official statistics actually understates the Chinese COVID death rate by about 17,000%. In fact, based on excess mortality calculations, uh, The Economist estimates that the true number of COVID death in China back in 2020 is not 4,636, but something like 1.7 million. Now, the same story is repeating itself over and over again over the three years. On January 11th, 2023, the Voice of America published an article titled Five Loved Ones Pass Away in Eight Days, None Related to COVID, reporting that Mr. Guangyao, a Beijing resident, lost five relatives in eight days, including his father and his grandmother, who grew up watching him. According to Guangyao, his beloved aunt was already suffering from white lung's condition, which is related to COVID, when uh, she was taken to the hospital, but the death report stated that she had Parkinson's disease. Guangyao's grandmother was also diagnosed with the virus before she passed away. In the end, however, none of Guanyao's five disease relatives were actually counted in the CCP virus uh, overall death statistics because none of them were reported as having died from the disease. On January 5th, 2023, the phrase three members of a family of six died appeared on the Weibo hot search list, which is China's social media, stating that three members of a family of six died in five days. And that report was pulled from China. By now, you might not be convinced either because this, again, is something statistically seemingly impossible to prove because we just don't have the data from China. I, I think this calls for the what happened during the Holocaust. Some people just didn't believe that the Holocaust was real, that it was happening, that it happened. To this day, there are people denying. It. I think it's because it's too shocking for us to comprehend such a large figure or such a crime being committed. The same thing today, I choose to believe in this number because I, I truly think that the CCP's actions reflect because of the censorship and the lies have killed many people around the world and in China. But in the end, it all comes down to whether or not the truth will be revealed one day. And if it does, do we choose to believe what we heard or do we choose to deny what we heard? Well, that's it for today. If you enjoy the content, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel and also comment below your thoughts on this video. If you're on Gunjing World, make sure to also follow our channel there. Love to exchange some ideas in the comments we do. I'm David Zhang. Thanks for watching State of Politics. See you next time.